Hey guys, welcome to another live stream. Today I'm going to be uh, vacuum forming these plastic shells that go underneath the, uh, the mask that give it the shape and then also allow the lenses to magnetize in place. Um, okay, cool. So um, basically I've got gloves. Um, I have a rag that I need to get wet here. Do that really fast. Um, this wet rag will cool the plastic a little faster after uh, after you heat it up and form it. Um, oh, I didn't get my vacuum form set up. Whoops. Oh well. Um, so here is the, uh, the frame setup I have here. I just use these wing nuts because it, um, some people use clamps, but uh, I use these wing nuts because it kind of pins the plastic down when you have a really large shape to go over. Oh. Yeah, so I haven't streamed in a little while. How's everyone doing? Look at these comments. That's cool. Good timing then. I just saw that Derek is vacuum forming his own shells. Um, cool, so I have to grab my vacuum form set up out in the garage. Buried in the sprinkler system I've got going for my garden. Dig it out. <laughs> I meant to get this before the stream started, but of course, it didn't. I also am going to have a fan running this whole stream, because if you do vacuum forming, you need to have a lot of ventilation. You can't do it with the air just sitting still. So that's kind of a recording no-no, but uh, that's how I do it. Okay, part one. Then I just use this little bucket head vacuum from Home Depot. Um, most people probably say it's not enough horsepower to vacuum form and you do run the risk of burning it out, but it's worked basically for like dozens and dozens of shells for me. So you can't beat the price. It's like $20. All right. Okay, so first up, I am going to make one ASM1 shell. So. I like to get it like perfectly centered. My oven is preheating right now. Also, uh, you have to set up the inside of your oven. I put a little uh, cookie tray with some tin foil on top of it just in case your plastic melts and droops down. You don't want it, you know, getting all over the the tr the racks underneath it in the oven. So that's one, you know, caution to take. Clean this off a little bit. I'll have to take it out in the garage and put some mold release on it. This is kind of just a getting work in done day. Hey, Matt. We'll probably uh, work on your shell at some point here. <laughs> That's funny. It's really late for Benny. That's funny. I've, I've thought about streaming in the middle of the night for me because I know that there are some people on the other side of the world that that's the middle of the day for them. Um, but I also don't speak their language probably. So here we go. Do some mold release on this. Um, you have to be careful where you do mold release. I just do it at the back of my garage, but the overspray, like if you do it in your basement or on a, any kind of um, floor that can get slick, it will and uh, kind of creates a slippery spot on the floor. And this buck is basically just a urethane shell a lot like how I used to make them, but it's a little bit thicker, and then I filled it with plaster to uh, give it the strength it needs to sustain, you know, withstand the heat of the vacuum form. Okay, there we go. Fits into that little bottom portion. If you were to just do a plastic shell and try to vacuum form it, the plastic will actually melt um, the the 
plastic buck and uh, everything will get crumpled and melted in. So you have to have the, some kind of heat resistant structure to it. Um, yeah, and also I'll, I'll talk about that since Winter Boy asked, is it safe to use the oven afterwards? Um, I really think it is. Uh, I don't, you know, the way, basically the way plastic and stuff works is the most dangerous thing right now is the fumes. While you're heating the actual plastic itself, it's releasing a lot of fumes. If it were to melt completely and drip into your oven, that'd be really bad because then it would be releasing fumes every time you cook something. Um, but you don't let it do that. You only let it get hot enough that it kind of droops down and then you take it out. Um, so I wouldn't want to eat food if I was cooking it at the same time as the plastic, but I just don't see how those fumes can really like stick around in your oven. And then I also, uh, I let the oven open. I just leave it open after I vacuum form something or I vacuum form a few times and uh, let it air out just so that those fumes, they aren't just like stuck in there. Um, okay, so the face shell creates such a huge bolt, you know, bulged shape that uh, I have to pin it down inside of the frame here. Well, first I'll put the uh, wing nuts down. Trying to get as many face shells cast today. I actually have already have a lot of the my upcoming orders that I'm about to finish done, but I want to get all of them done because I'm just I want to get this done so I can move on to new tutorials and new projects. There are a lot of things I want to work on. And so I'm just kind of like focusing the last few weeks. I've already got, I shipped out two orders this week alone. Um, so I'm just focusing on getting caught up on those. So my oven's ready. Oops. I didn't put the drill bit in tight enough. Plastic looks a little dusty, so I'll probably uh, wipe it off. And again, this just pins the plastic down on the sides. If you tried, you know, usually you'd want to do this with a, with a larger piece of plastic, but this is what fits in my oven and also the original size of plastic sheets I got. Sorry, I can't read comments right now. I'll read them in a second. All right. I do that to basically every sheet of plastic just so that um, there's no little uh, debris on the plastic itself that'll allow it to uh, be stuck on the plastic and then be pressed into the final mold. Okay, and so you can see my frame is kind of specially built here so that the wires suspend it in the middle of the oven there. And so now I set a timer for about five minutes. That's how long it takes before it like starts to get ready and I really need to be paying attention because you don't want it to be ready right when it's time to like mold. You want to have your timer go off a little earlier than that in my experience. Um, uh, Insane Rain, I saw that question a couple times. He asked, what's your first cosplay? Uh, I did Boba Fett. Uh, and I've been working on projects like forever. When, when I was into Zelda, I made a Link costume as you know, basically as possible. But uh, Bubba Fett was kind of the first one I actually made. Um, uh, the material is eighth, eighth of an inch thick. And then when the, the shell actually gets cast, um, it gets a lot thinner. So the actual finished shell won't be an eighth of an inch, but uh, that's what I start with. Yeah, that, that's, Derek just said that having an elevated buck is good for reducing webbing. I, that's basically the, the whole design of the tilt of it and how high it is, because I get webbing down here, but I make sure that it, it doesn't, 
you know, it doesn't come too far up on the chin. The webbing usually stops like right up on the chin. And webbing is when, you know, the material has to come in so close. You can see these, these kind of bumps in this plastic because this is a vacuum plastic base that smooths everything out. Um, otherwise, the plastic can get sucked in and then it hits a sharp edge and it pops and it, uh, a hole comes open. So we check. It's still still heating up. You can you can tell when it starts to dip down, and then I let it dip a pretty far distance because you want it to be able to go that distance the other direction to cast the shell. We'll see how this goes with the camera in my face. <laughs> yeah, sorry sorry if it's late for you guys. I guess that's how the world works. It's just evening for me. I'll do some middle of the night streams eventually. Cuz I I definitely work on projects in the middle of the night sometimes. Okay. So getting ready. I'm going to use these gloves just so I don't burn myself on any of the metal components, but a, a key key note is when you're using like a wet rag to cool the plastic, don't hold it with gloves cuz if the the gloves are hot or if you then touch a hot material with the wet gloves it can sear your fingers because it turns into steam really hot steam and your gloves keep it to your fingers so that can be a really bad burn um, so as soon as i use that i take the gloves off okay so we're starting to to droop here you can kind of tell you can see me in the reflection there <laughs> and then i've got the lenses here because I use those as a press. Uh, they have the magnets already in place and uh, that, that presses the, where, where the new lenses will you know, sit on the shell. All right, yeah, so it's starting to stretch a lot. I need to do less time on my timer. Yep, okay. Almost there, it might not be consistently heating enough which is something that can happen in some ovens. Mine's a little cheaper. That was pretty successful. Hopefully that wasn't too loud or annoying. I apologize, I should have warned, warned you before. Okay, yeah, that worked pretty well. Basically, if it didn't work, you know, sometimes it doesn't suck all the way in on the side, so it kind of just smooths out a little bit and doesn't keep the shell shape, or um, it can, can print, it can kind of get pressed into some impression and then move, so you have that impression move. So you have to look out for little things like that. Um, and now I clean it out and get ready to cast a new shell. That's the only only ASM one shell I needed to cast. So I'm gonna switch over to ASM two now. All right, looks good. Yeah, you should be careful because all these metal components will get hot. Although I take the uh, or I use gloves when I trim the shell out of the plastic here. All right. Grab the comments. Yeah, so thanks for tuning in if you're, you're here watching. I'm kind of in work mode. It's interesting working and streaming at the same time. Oh yeah, hey Rambunctious, I saw your comment earlier. Um, I think the, Tia, the ASM2 costume is the best, in my opinion. Uh, there, you know, all the other ones have had neat, you know, neat interpretations, but the ASM2 is just the, the best swing at the comic book 
look of Spider-Man. And it, it did a good job of just kind of making it happen, and you didn't have to think too much about how it happened, kind of like in the first movies. Um, it just sucks that the, the rest of the movie, like I really didn't like Electro in that movie, unfortunately. And then their, their kind of shoddy attempt at creating a multi-universe there. All right, so the shell is out of the frame. Get these off to the side. I can also take out this web base. That's how I, why I have it designed that way. But I don't have it that way for the uh, uh, ASM2 shell. Are you uh, Nova Gaming? Are you talking about the old cartoons, like the 60s cartoons? Because I have those on DVD. I watch them every now and then. It's just, it's funny. It's just such a, you know, Saturday morning cartoons have come such a long way since then. <laughs> if you look at something like the, the 90s Spider-Man or the 90s Batman or the 90s X-Men show and compare it to something like the old 60s Spider-Man cartoon, that cartoon is, every episode is identical. <laughs> in its structure. And the animation's always so comical. And the, the theme song is played twice in a 15 minute episode. And the theme song lasts like a minute and a half. <laughs> so every episode you get three minutes of the theme song. Funny stuff. Uh, Smesh just asked, you, do you collect Spider-Man comics? Um, actually, no, I'm not, I'm not as big a fan of the comics. I've, I, I read them a lot when I was younger, but I kind of fell out of it. Because um, when I was reading comics in the 90s, that's how young I was when I was reading comics, it was very, very much a festival of characters dying and coming back to life. That was kind of lame. That always kind of reminded me of soap operas because I think that's just the the crux of any kind of storytelling that has to go on forever is it starts to seem like a so soap opera with dramatic stuff happening. That's why I like the movies. I, well, I'm not going to throw those away in this trash. It's already full. The movies are great because it has, it has to be some super important event in that character's life. It's hard for it to just be a mundane never-ending thing. <laughs> That's funny. Scott just said he has the, the same snips. These are actually um, airline, airline snips, I think. And the one thing I learned is the color actually tells you what direction they cut. So if it's red like this, it cuts off to the left, I think. At least that's my experience with it. And then I think if it's green, it cuts the other direction and then yellow cuts straight. So that's a fun fact. Um, this material is uh, ABS plastic. Uh, just just in case you don't know, it's eighth of an inch ABS plastic. It's really strong and good for um, uh, what I'm doing here. So now I have to uh, trim this guy a little bit. And this is a uh, just a box cutter knife. And these are good. Oh, I don't I don't know. I guess I don't have the the snapping element. Oh well. Um, these are good because you can just break off the blade and it's a new sharp blade. That's pretty handy and it's a lot thicker, this type, as more of like a box cutter. Always be careful, don't, you know, cut like right near your wrist or towards yourself. Um, sometimes you have to do some types of cuts like that. Um, this will be a little complicated with a camera in my face, but I'll try to be safe. <laughs> Uh, I'm probably cutting too low. The big thing about vacuum forming a face shell like this is it has a lot of undercuts. What an undercut is, is right now the plastic is on this thing. 
if you can see, it's got undercuts basically all around the bottom of it. So the only way to get this thing off is to eliminate enough of the undercut on the back here and push it up and forward um, and hope that that is enough to get it out of there. So yeah, I have to trim all the way around here. I already know that that's probably too low, so I'm gonna start again. And you're supposed to kind of score at it, but this back cut is kind of important. So try to get one like nice, clean, straight cut and then score at that. So it's pretty, it feels pretty freed up back there. Now I go all the way around right underneath where the outside of the shell is. Get it rid of as much undercut as I can. Might be a little too low there. You have to be careful and, and do this cut job well because when you're freeing it up, if this isn't cut off well enough, it can crack at really you know thin critical points. I have a lot of cracked shells like that. Okay. So, let's see if that was enough. Might not have been enough under the chin. Wasn't close enough anyway. Gotta be careful because this is not fully cut. So if I were to try and rip this off, it might tear on the chin because these chins are always thin because the plastic has already had to stretch really far to get even down to the chin. And then it stretches even further underneath the chin. So you always have to be careful there. Um, I think it's good though that it gets that thin around the edges because it's really strong and durable and holds its shape where you need it up on the main shape, but then gets thinner around the edges. And so when you put it on the, your head, it'll kind of press around the edges and make a better shape. Um, I'm Derek, I'm not sure what HIPS plastic is. Um, but you, you could definitely look it up on Google because most, most plastics are going to have a lot of information about like thermoforming and their thermoformability. Um, ABS is a thermoform plastic. Like the insides of airplanes are basically made the exact same way this face shell was and a lot of like automotive parts because it creates just one solid piece of plastic that is really durable. Wow, I've got 111 people watching. That's crazy. I guess face shells are interesting. <laughs> Vacuum forming face shells is interesting. That's about a hundred more than I usually have. <laughs> well, that's good. Um, I'm gonna, uh, speaking more about the streams, I'm gonna be doing some more uh, like kind of professional looking streams with the non first person camera. I'm sorry if this makes some people sick. I always, I always forget to mention at the beginning of the, the um, stream that it's kind of like podcast mode. It's not exactly just like a tutorial stream. You know, there's so much downtime and just kind of chatting. Okay, and so this slit I'm putting in here, I just talked to a customer about that. They were wondering if it was intentional. This slit is necessary to get it off of the, the buck. And then it also helps on a larger head like mine to get the, uh, the shell actually on your head. Oh, that was easy. Okay, well usually that's a lot harder. Um, but I guess I did a good job trimming it. Uh, and the mold release goes a long way. Um, so I made a little error. I accidentally divoted into the forehead there, but it's, it's not something that would affect the final look of the shell. That kind of happens, unfortunately. You get divots and kind of like little potholes in the plastic, um, but it doesn't affect the overall. Like this one right here, I didn't have anything to do with that little pothole, but it just kind of is a something that happens kind of, and unfortunately this is not the highest quality ABS I've ever used. The, the place I get it from is a little cheap in the extrusion. Cool. Um, so now, while I have the oven still going, 
I will get ready for the next show, which won't be that. No, this is uh, fuzzy. This is just the uh, ASM-1 shell that I just vacuumed. I'll be vacuuming the ASM-2 shell next. And those are the, uh, the, the Mark Webb movies. I did the, the Sam Raimi mask in the past, but I didn't do it with a face shell. Because it used to be, face shells used to be the, you know, such a tough thing to come by. And they are, they're a lot of work to get to a good spot with them. They're pretty crazy shapes, ultimately. Come on. I just have these four corner bolts glued into the frame. And you'll notice the frame is just made out of Home Depot ruler because that, you know, you know it's already gonna be straight and it's pretty cheap compared to a lot of their other thinner, uh, you know, higher quality woods. Oh, so uh, Derek, <laughs> Derek, um, if you ordered it from a vacuum form site, then yeah, it's definitely definitely going to be available. Thanks, Daniel. Glad you guys are using the uh, or liking the uh, the stream. <laughs> using the stream. And uh, hello, Russia. I guess I don't. Hi, hi, everyone. Hi, world. That's the world we're living in. We're heading, heading towards a more unified world. There's no stopping that freight train as hard as some governments try. All right. So this is almost ready for forming again. And again, I apologize if this first person view is like sickening or shakes around too much. Uh, it's really convenient for me because um, if you've ever done a tutorial or any kind of video like that, you know that it can take so much time setting up shots and, um, oops, there we go. You know, uh, getting camera angles and all that kind of stuff. And it just takes way too much time away from actually doing the thing. And some, you know, it takes so much time switching from camera angles um, to do something like this vacuum forming. Whereas I can just kind of work on it, get the work done as quickly as I want to, and then uh, move on. All right, so I'll go ahead and put this in the oven and get it heating. I, I put the oven at 450 degrees for ABS this thick. It needs to be pretty hot. Um, and remember, you want ventilation. I have fans going through my house right now. Um, I'm gonna put the timer for four minutes. So, I'm gonna take these gloves off. Um, here's my ASM2 book. I need to go ahead and wipe it off. It's a little dusty. Good. And once again, this is just a, like a urethane shell that I cast a lot like how I used to cast face shells. This is what face shells used to look like when you got them from me, but it has plaster on the inside to really reinforce it when it's vacuum formed. Otherwise the heat of the vacuum formed plastic will just melt down. Okay. That's probably good. Uh, this one's a little more difficult. The ASM-1 has less undercut. This one needs a little bit more help in some areas. And this is a mold release that you get from like plastic and silicone places. Um, you know, like standard cooking uh, release spray m would probably work, but I just don't want to risk like getting that all over my plastic and there being like a negative reaction because that's what actual mold release is designed to do. 
Um, go look at the comments. Wow. 172 watching. That's definitely the most I've ever had by a lot. <laughs> the comments are kind of like all the other comment streams on YouTube live. So hey everyone, thanks for tuning in, if you understand English. I'm just working on stuff. And it's fun. Oh, uh, Nova, yeah, I've seen your, your comment. Um, Miles Morales, I like, I like that character a lot. I like the design too. Um, I don't know much about the actual character himself. Um, but uh, yeah, I was actually contacted a few years ago, like right after I started doing puff painted suits to do a Miles Morales suit. And it would look a lot like uh, what a lot of people have, have kind of come up with. And it looks cool. I think it's a cool design, a lot like the symbiote suit. I think the black and red is good for like a Spider-Man design because it makes a little more sense than red and blue. But everyone loves the red and blue suit. I don't, that's such a huge component of the character. Okay, so this might be a little loud. Just everyone watching, you might have to turn your volume down if you understand English, <laughs> just so you know. Okay, so I'm at about like two inches of droop here. I don't know if you can really see it that well. I want it to get to like, you know, three, three and a half inches. Turn off my timer since I'm here. <laughs> All right, yep, so that's about ready to go. Okay, here goes the vacuum. <laughs> Yeah, that's another good one. Yeah, I've, I've, I used to have a lot of trouble with vacuum forming. I would kind of run into a bunch of little problems, but it seems like now I've kind of solved a lot of those issues. Um, Roman, if you look at my Instagram, I did the symbiote mask from Spider-Man 3 a few years ago. That was kind of like one of the first Spider-Man projects I worked on back in the day. I did Venom too. Uh, my Instagram account is just McLean.Krieger. So a lot like my YouTube uh, account, just without the space and with a, a dot in the middle. So go check out my Instagram. I've got some pictures of projects I've worked on there. And this is cool. Yeah, wow, 239 people, that's crazy. So yeah, this is kind of what I was hoping for more more or less like when I started to get into MCU stuff so that's exciting it's gonna be a lot of watch time for my channel all right ouch yeah see those get hot when you put them in the oven So that's why I just moved to gloves. And then once again, always take your gloves off before you start doing a wet rag on a vacuum form buck because if your gloves get wet and you touch it, you can sear yourself really easily. Yeah, glad you guys are enjoying it. <laughs> Fun. I wonder what happened that made me jump from my usual 20 viewers to like 220. Move this. What did I need?
All right, oh, that's right. To see comments. <laughs> oh, thanks, Roman. I wish I could read other languages. We're almost at the point where Google can just translate everything for us. Not quite. Yeah, so I wonder what time, what time it is <laughs> for all you people. This is just the, uh, Amazing Spider-Man 2 mask shell, face shell. So yeah, if you're, uh, if you're just tuning in, I'm working on these face shells right now. I don't have the lenses, but the actual, you know, plastic face shell that goes underneath it. Uh, that's, that's what we're working on right now. Keep that over there. Yeah, and I apologize, this might be, as, as I just did that quick movement, this might be sort of sickening for you guys. So I apologize if that's the case. But it works really well for me to film this way. Uh, no, this isn't Venom. This is just the shell that goes underneath a Spider-Man mask. Um, I've done Venom, though. If you look at my Instagram. I want to do that project again, actually. Especially now that we're getting Venom and Carnage in movies. That'll be really cool. That sounds like a really awesome project. And with Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy will make that project even cooler. I hope. Unfortunately. No. Uh, not gonna hold my breath with a certain studio's track record. <laughs> um, uh, Chicken Nugget just asked, how do I make Andrew mask? It's identical. Um, well, it's not identical, that's for sure. I still, there, there are a couple things that I wanna do Actually, even more further changes to the, the mask and the shell when I move to 3D printing because there are some things I think I can fix and clean up really well. Um, but a lot of practice, that's the key. You know, it's taken me years and several, several uh, face shell versions to kind of get to the point I'm at in all of this. But it never ends. You can always be better. That's why I love this stuff. It never ever ends. Reality, reality is like a Minecraft version with all the mods. And you can just build whatever you want. It's just a matter of finding the tools and the materials. It's wonderful. It's my favorite thing to do. Okay, so this has a lot of undercuts. <laughs> right under to the neck. This one's always a little bit more of a struggle. And I'm really scoring this cut here because you just don't want it to crack up into the actual mask itself. <laughs> That's so funny. How are 270 people watching this right now? <laughs> What is, what is worth 270 people's attention here? <laughs> That's very funny. There we go. Cracks like an egg if you score it well enough. Gotta be careful here, because I don't know if it's connected well enough. It might tear. Here we go. 
Ooh, that was a little risky. What just happened to the chin there? If I if it had been a little less scored, it might have cracked. I've I've really cracked so many face shells that way, and they also like to crack right here, anywhere that it gets really thin because of the vacuform process. There we go. All right. So once again, I'm, I'm doing this little pressure relief cut because it still is undercut here. There's still is such an undercut all the way around. It's basically like an egg. If an egg were, face, were, were vacuum formed and you have two thirds of the egg vacuum formed, you really have to figure out how you would possibly get that off. And this is kind of the only way. You just have to make sure it's straight and center. And I start with a smaller cut, and if I if it, I struggle to get the face shell off, I make it a little larger at a time. Just have to make sure that it actually goes all the way through. Yeah, Jonathan, I filled in the center forehead seam, and then on future versions, I'm gonna fill in these these side things, like little divots, and I'm gonna smooth out the nose and the chin so it looks more like human, because I, I, I designed this face shell for my mask um, with the, where the seams go. Um, it doesn't really need the forehead seam because even the movie mask has the forehead steam, seam kind of sticking up a little bit. Um, and these, the way the chin is designed, I've, I've noticed that you know if it's not my mask, if it's someone else's mask, this chin design really sticks out and is apparent. So you know I've noticed people you know still really like my lenses, but you know there are other shell shell types they go with. Um, so it's an always always improving process. I feel like I'm, I'm, so, I'm close enough though that if I were to modify the shape a little bit in 3D program and have it 3D printed, um, I'm basically almost to like total accuracy. All right, so I think that there's too much of an undercut still, so I might have to trim more off the back here can really be a fight. Oh yeah, there's way too much of an undercut here. So I just need to trim like half an inch off. I can, I can basically eyeball and know when it's too much and gonna be trouble. Cause it really pinches right here on the back temple. Um, Overall, I think it's a better shell design than the ASM-1 as, as far as how, how it ugh, as far as how it looks. But the ASM-1 comes off the buck a lot easier. All right, Let's see if that does a little bit better, and I'll clean up that edge after it's off the buck. That's really on there. That's where your mold release is important. Ugh, I didn't trim enough off yet. And then I think I have to move my center line a little higher up. Yeah, painkiller, Hearthstone. Um, I wanna do the moving eyes tutorial. I just have to, really have to get these done first. I just can't ignore the people who are waiting for this stuff and only work on that stuff. So I need to get this stuff done and then I will move on to that. Um, it's a good sign though. I mean, getting such a big boost in viewers, I'll definitely factor that into consideration Yeah, this guy's really fighting just because I didn't use enough mold release maybe. Unfortunately, my other mold release that I typically use is out. And so this other one's not quite as reliable. So here I am fighting with it live. <laughs> I'm 
I've been here before though. Sometimes you have to go as far as kind of hammering it, tapping it. Because once it just gets loose, it's just so suctioned on there. Once it gets a little bit of air in there, it, uh, it should come apart. It's like taking off a really bad lid. <laughs> Might have to go get my hammer. <laughs> I don't know how going to the gym's gonna give me leverage on this thing. <laughs> Although I do, I do need to go to the gym more. <laughs> All right, time for tools. I also might just need to trim, trim more off the back. There's always, always an option in this situation. Hammer. Just gotta be careful not to destroy it. The shell or the buck. All right, there we go. Let's see if that does it. A little bit off that side. <laughs> yeah, the difficult thing is, keep in mind that my only point of leverage while I do this is this little tiny edge between the face shell and the, the buck. You know, if it was any more leverage, I'm sure it would be a little easier. Jeez, yeah, it might be that mold release. Okay, so. had this struggle before <laughs> and it's always possible you know you only have a certain amount of molds with a sh uh, buck and stuff <laughs> it's so funny funny that this is happening live live on the stream Just have to be so careful because I just don't want to destroy either the shell or the buck. That's another thing, you know, it's it's grabbing on down here a lot. Oh yeah, and over here. Oops, jeez. So there's a slice into the actual shell. Darn it. That happens doesn't really affect the actual shell itself because it was hopefully not all the way through. But we'll see. We'll see if that gets it off. Ugh. Yeah, that thing is just on there. Might have to take the camera off my face. 
<laughs> Watch a guy struggle to get a facial off live. <laughs> Hundreds of viewers. Will he win? Oh no, I cracked it, darn it. Oh, big crack. See, that's, that's what I was talking about. Careful not to destroy it. Well, this one might be destroyed anyway, just because of the fact that it's not coming off. <laughs> that usually means I have to destroy it to get it off. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I used enough mold release, unfortunately. Pretty sure. <laughs> So now it's just get it off <laughs> and save the mold. Oh yeah, because if this, if this big ch chunk is off, it should now come off easily. So I definitely just didn't use enough mold release this time around. Whoops. Live and learn. Another defective face shell. I have a big box of these. Okay, time for brain surgery. I've had to do brain surgery before here. Come on, just come off. Nope, that feels like kind of stuck. Okay. Oops. It's hard to get the angle. I realize now that I tilt my head a lot, now that I have a camera in my face. <laughs> hey, 300 viewers exactly. And then down to 296. Well, it was 300 for a second. It's definitely an all time high for me. All right, so now I'm just doing surgery and getting the face shell out. There we go. Well, the buck is fine. It's just I didn't use enough mold release. And so this shell is a defective shell. Although I usually find uses for shells like this. Usually, um, like I, I, I have to cut a lot of components out of ABS plastic for the moving lenses. And it's nice having these curved shells because it matches the curve of the inside of the other shell. <laughs> wow, finally, yeah. <laughs> Alright, so now I have to just go ahead and get ready to vacuum form another one, because that one was a dud. That happens though, unfortunately. There are a lot of duds in this, this type of work. Um, what I need to do is get way, way more mold release on here though for the next one. The first shell came off no problem, and then this one way too difficult. So it just needs to look like it's wet, essentially. And especially in undercut areas. I just didn't do nearly enough. Because if you look, if you back up in the video, you use your TiVo functionality here. I sprayed it a little bit, and I knew immediately that that wasn't enough. So I went and sprayed it again for another couple of seconds. But, you know, while I was struggling, I realized that that still wasn't enough. It just needs to look glossy. You know, it looks wet right now. It's a lot of mold release, but it's better than losing the shell like I just did. That struggle, I'm sweating now, because also my, my air conditioning is off in my house in order to just have the fan running. All right. 
<laughs> well, at least I didn't lose the buck. It's kind of impossible to lose the buck. All you can do is like, I could damage the buck if while I was, you know, hammering out the shell, if I had accident, accidentally chiseled into the buck itself. Um, so that's why I was really gentle with the hammer and the chisel, all, you know, until I ripped the shell. But that shell wasn't gonna come off without some cutting and ripping, so. Oh well, that's just a defective shell. It still, it still is a good shell um, up until here. It's just the other area that's bad. Okie dokie. Gotta just keep moving on. Trying to just get every stage done of every shell. I have a lot of shells that are closer and ready to go, but I just want to get all of these done. So I'm kind of just treating it like I have one giant order to do, um, which can be hard to do. There's a lot of labor for that many shells in each step. But I've been doing that with like the lenses and stuff. And then when I'm finishing another set of, another sh shell order, it's easier because I get to that step where I did all of the work and I kind of fly through it. So I think all these shells should be done soon. Thankfully, we'll see what the future holds. <laughs> Not really itching to get right back into it, but I have ideas on what to do for that. can't really see your comments right now. Wish I could. I see them flashing in front of my face, but I can't read them. Too close. plastic in. Give it four minutes. About. Hey, Degsy. Yeah, uh, thanks for tuning in, everyone who's watching right now. It's been about a week, week and a half since I last streamed. And, you know, I, I don't want to slack off and kind of let this fall apart. So I, I really enjoy doing these streams. It's fun to be here and talk to you guys. <laughs> um, yeah, I do sort of have a permanent mold going for the homecoming mask. It needs some, some fixes to it, but I basically have my permanent molds and then I've got some other things going. So, I mean, I, I've got a sort of kit set up going for the, um, homecoming stuff, but, uh, that's still... Still a ways out because I still have other things to do. I'll be uh, I'll be doing some live videos in the next like week or two, um, depending on how quickly I get the shell work. But I'll be doing live videos where I actually sew together the ASM one Spider-Man costume, and I think that'll be a lot of fun. It won't be in this point of view perspective type viewing because then I'll I'll run out of battery like I always do on these streams. Um, so it'll be actual setup cameras again. Um, Kiseki, uh, I get that question a lot about face shell sales and stuff. Um, nothing right now. Um, I'm working on getting caught up on stuff, but, uh, you know, potentially we'll see what, what the future holds. Uh, I also, you know, <laughs> I'm a little hesitant to talk about that stuff on a live stream, but we'll see. If you, if you haven't heard already, I've got my Instagram account at uh, mclean.krieger, the same spelling as my YouTube name, um, just with a dot in the middle. And uh, you can look at projects I do there. I, that's m the main place I post pictures and stuff. Here, look at Spider-Man mask. Ooh, there we go.
Yeah, Degsy, Degsy asked about how to glue rubber components to a suit. Yeah, it's a little, it's tough for sure. Um, Cause yeah, glue can be tricky unless you use a flexible glue. You just have to do a lot of testing, um, test the different glues and stuff. Like if you have scrap pieces of the trim or something. Um, but yeah, gluing rubber stuff is definitely tough. That's kind of what came, what started my uh, silicone rubber technique on the suit where you just put the silicone rubber straight on the suit. Because the good thing about that is it just bonds straight to the, the fabric of the costume rather than being um, uh, glued and kind of rough. All right, so fingers crossed this thing has enough mold release this time. Ooh, that was almost my phone on the ground. That would have been nice. Okay, so the plastic is almost stretched out enough. Yeah, I'd say it's pretty good. All right, that was loud. Yeah, that would work for that kind of Spider-Man noir looking shell. It's just for this though, for the ASM shell that we're doing this right now. All right, so once again, cool everything off a little bit. <laughs> yeah, well, Degsy, you're in luck, because that's kind of all today is, is vacuum forming over and over. I just have to clear out the frame every time. That's kind of the biggest tedious part of vacuum forming, is clearing out the frame and the buck, if you're using the same buck over and over. Yeah, thanks for tuning in if you're one of the new viewers I have right now, because definitely a lot more viewers than I typically have during one of my live streams. It's exciting because then I'll get to work on, you know, newer fun projects that I'm, I'm looking forward to working on and I can do it live. You guys can watch. So subscribe if you, if you aren't already and uh, then you'll, you'll get a little notification when I go live and then you can tune in. So get those out of the way. <laughs> Pretty funny, funny crowd we've got here today. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um, I've never sold defective face shells. I have a lot. It's just, I. If if I deem a face shell defective, I, I usually figure it's kind of of no use to someone that wants to make a costume out of it. And then at that point, 
the only people it's kind of useful to are the people who just want to get the general shape to recreate their own face shells. So I always am careful that I'm not just giving a scammer a discount face shell, you know, and that shape is all they're after in the first place. So I've, I've always been kind of hesitant with just doing like discount, you know, defective stuff. Yep, this part again. This part again, over and over. This is definitely the worst part of uh, the vacuum forming process. Because it's terrifying. It's so easy to make mistakes. So easy for it to lock up like it did. It's kind of, you know, the best term for that is high stress work. You know, if you're doing a project that has a lot of chance of like failure or, you know, kind of messing up and it messes up the whole thing, I call that high stress work. And that's like all of this face shell work. There's just such a high likelihood that you'll be working on a lens or a shell and you'll have put like hours and hours and hours of work into it and then it fails or something goes wrong, which is just really stressful. <laughs> it's stress, it's like walking along a tightrope between two buildings, knowing that, you know, the, the consequences are so high. Okay, so that's pretty well slit there. Just have to connect it. Oh, uh, Degzy, um, he will get that shell for sure. Um, I don't want people to think that he's never going to get that thing. Um, it's just still broken. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, the, the part that broke makes me realize I need to go through and strengthen all of the connections that are done the same way that, as the part that broke. Because the part that broke is just one of like two dozen different connections like that. And uh, I need to fix all of those. And so... That's, you know, along with these shells is getting that, that mask done and definitely I'm gonna get it to him because um, I already got my video and stuff out of it. So I'm excited to get that to him. And then in the future, do more contests. Um, okay, gotta be careful. I don't tear the chin down here or over here. Hopefully I trimmed it high enough up. I probably didn't though. Try to aim my camera a little bit better here. Sometimes I forget about it. And it's really important that I see what I'm doing. there got to be careful because I keep saying it these these chins are so likely to crack because the plastic is so thin down around the edge hola Andrew and hola everyone else <laughs> hello to all of the people watching right now it's really cool how many more viewers I have today than I usually have. If anyone's familiar with my streams, I usually have about like 20 <laughs> or 30 maybe at tops. But I enjoy doing this. I enjoy working and answering questions and stuff when I can. Because like anyone who sends me a message knows, I'm terrible about answering those. So this is kind of like the best time to get my attention all right, fingers crossed for a little more success this time. Hopefully it's not just my mold getting old, the buck getting... All right, might have to trim more. Hopefully it's not just gonna be this way every time.
This really is one of the worst parts of vacuum warming, especially when you've got a shape like this face shell. Should come off though. Now oh, I see the bump. I'm gonna have to trim that anyway because I've got this high point. Yeah, unfortunately this, this buck is really old. I've cast so many shells on it that it just gets harder and harder every time. That's kind of the nature of vacuum forming and stuff. Gosh, I hope I put enough mold release on this time. Hope I had. Uh-oh, hope I don't have to wreck another one of these. I don't have a ton of plastic left. Let's use something a little flatter. I can tell you right now, I've gotten like dozens and dozens and dozens of shells off of this thing. It can only go so far, I think. Just have to be careful not to crack it like last time. Jeez, it's a good thing my first shell worked out, or else this would be <laughs> a big failure of a stream already. First shell was easy. Just slipped right off. <sighs> hmm. Do I have to trim even more? Guess I just still didn't use enough. Uh mold release. Yeah, I should use more mold release. <laughs> well, now I just have to keep trimming until it comes off. It shortens the shell each time, unfortunately, but it's the only way to get it out. Because it's all of this undercut. Very annoying. It moved a little bit. Come on. No leverage. Hmm. 
Yeah, demonic strawberry. There are lots of other ways um, to make face shells. You can do face shells, basically any method that you can use to make a hard, you know, lightweight surface like fiberglass or plastic, but they all have, you know, their, uh, their benefits and their downsides. I like the vacuform shells because they're really strong. Um, they're lightweight, they're thin, they're really evenly thin all along. Like if you have a cast plastic shell, sometimes they can be like bumpy and uncomfortable. I'm trying to break the seal on the inside. I hope this buck isn't done because I still need more shells. <laughs> I'll just have to cast another one if that's the case. I might need my other mold release. I think my other mold release might be better at this. Unfortunately, I'm out of it. Ugh. Yeah, I might have to kill another shell here. I'm just chipping away at it. That's nice. Eventually it'll destroy the buck itself. Yeah, it should definitely already be coming off, so I think that's a m another mold release problem. The mold release should get it off. Yeah, I would try blasting air in there, but there's just no... ...space. Yeah, it was crazy. Two shells in a row. Usually I, I get a little bit more done <laughs> in this amount of time when it comes to vacuum forming time. Just no leverage. Very irritating. Hmm. The most frustrating thing is that it's just this, this little sliver of leverage along the edge that I have to hold on to here. It's like it's like watching someone play a video game. You guys get to all watch me sit here and struggle with this and shout what I should be doing. Oh, there we go. I don't might do it. That's a lot of leverage. Oh, come on. Yeah, that is so stuck on there. There we go. Jeez, that was what I was waiting for. Ugh. Oh, you gotta be kidding. Don't tell me you cracked on your way out. Okay, good. Whew. All right, so 
this is still a shell. Good, salvaged it. Well, that worked. Sticking needle nose pliers in there and then grabbing onto the plastic so that I could actually push because it needed to be pushed away from the shell because it creates like a suction in between the shell and the um, uh, buck. <laughs> yeah, Jesus, finally. I, I agree. I'm sitting here sweating working with it. <laughs> So yes, I agree. I'm gonna put a lot more mold release on the next one. And then you get to watch me struggle with that. It's fun for everyone. <laughs> but each time, I really think I might be coming to the end here with this, this uh, buck. You just want there to be so much that, you know, it's just like petroleum jelly. It just glides off when it's time to separate the two. Okay. Let's hope it works better. So now I uh, set up another piece of plastic. Um, there's not really any such thing as too much mold release. Because if anything, it just kind of pull up and drip and um, be like a liquid surface, but the hot plastic would, you know, kind of push it out of the way when it, uh, when it was, um, molding onto it, the buck. So I don't, I don't think, I mean, you could probably put too much on there. Like if it filled up little d details, you needed to vacuum form. But for the most part, there's not, no, no much, no such thing as too much. You can just be wasting the mold release at a po certain point and it's kind of expensive stuff, unfortunately. It's more expensive than spray paint. <laughs> All right, well, we'll, we'll form a shell in a minute here. I just have to heat up the plastic. I just leave my oven heating the entire time while I do this. And I think that's a good thing to do because it allows your oven to stay hot and if there are any fumes or anything, I just really don't believe that that's the case. Oops, put the bolts in. <laughs> the meaning of life is just to reproduce. It's just to keep living. That's the only visible meaning I can see. That's, that's life's only imperative, is to keep living. It's to reproduce and keep itself going. Because if it doesn't, then it dies. All right. Plastic in the oven there. Get the timer going. <laughs> I 
Yeah, I put a lot of mold release on this time. But I think it might might just be this this buck, this vacuform buck just getting old and uh, as it gets old, you know, the, the vacuform process itself is really tough. It's 450 degree plastic that's being put onto your buck and then being sucked down with vacuum pressure um, and then being pulled off and ripped and muscled off. Uh, and so that can be really destructive to whatever your buck is. And so you only have a finite amount of shells or castings you can make and that kind of goes for most molds you can only make so many before the mold itself starts to get destroyed and unfortunately i've <laughs> i've vacuum formed this thing like dozens and dozens and dozens of times so it really could be just getting to that point it might be time to 3d print a new buck honestly that might be what the the next thing i do if this thing starts to get dysfunctional is I, I 3D print a new buck like I did for the MCU shell. And then it'll have a lot of, like if you see these little black areas are where I have to, had to fix the shape. Like I filled in the, the forehead gap. Um, There's a little area here that was a little weak. There's a little here, area here that didn't go quite far enough out. Um, but I can fix those with 3D printing pretty easily. Hmm. Yeah, all right. Yeah, and I'm doing this this point of view type filming on my phone. So my phone sometimes just cuts out. I got a, a warning message a little bit ago. So just so you know, if the stream just randomly cuts out at some point, that might be what it is. Shouldn't happen before I mold this though. can't see comments, but I, I need to sit here and watch the plastic. Almost. Yeah, that's pretty wet and slick with mold release, so fingers crossed, this time it's enough. All right, it's drooping about two inches now. I don't know how well you guys can see it through like the reflection and stuff. Drooping about two inches. You can see it's just like going at a pretty steady pace now, so it's time to take it out and vacuum form it. So, loud, loud part here. guys there. I don't know how the mask got so moved. There we go. Uh, I think that's probably the last shell I'll do for today. So turn my oven off. I actually, I turn the oven off and then I just leave it open. Oops. Because like I said earlier, as to the conversation with, you know, if the fumes are toxic or if it's toxic to use the oven afterwards, I really don't think it is. And then it's 
I mean, especially not if everything's allowed to air out and get out of there. Um, you really, I mean, most issues with heat and plastic and food come when you're like cooking a dish on a plastic bowl or something that isn't meant to be heated and then it leaches its plastic or uh, it leaches chemicals into the actual food itself. And then you eat those chemicals, um, which I mean, that doesn't happen at all in this process. You're not putting your food even in the oven at the same time as the plastic. Um, but I mean, if you're, if it's, if it's too risky, then for sure, um, you know, you might want to err on the side of caution, but I don't foresee there being an issue with that. And it would be difficult um, to have this space. You can get actual vacuform machines that are, you know, heat the plastic and help move it down. Um, but it's not the most common piece of equipment. <laughs> and it'd take up some space too, as would an extra oven. Right, back to everyone's favorite time. <laughs> Ouch. Um, the uh, the head mount I'm using right now is just some bent wires. Nothing too extravagant. Some bent wires and padding and then a, a piece of elastic that holds it all on. And it's always <laughs> almost at the point of tipping out my phone. It's pretty funny. <laughs> yep, this again. That's, that's the thing about face shell work. It's, you just said it, this again, this again. <laughs> it's a lot of repetition. Repetition and then also really high stress work, like I said earlier. So it's repetitive, stressful stuff sometimes. Where it's hard to just kind of tune out or uh, zone out like you do at some, some jobs, like if you're working at like a fast food place or something. If you zone out here, then you wreck the shell or you don't put on enough <laughs> mold release or any number of things. So once again, just the scoring part. At least that last shell came off without me needing to destroy it. I was happy that that wasn't a defective shell. Okay, so I'm just going to do it high up on this one to start. It's hard for me to get a good view on my cuts here. I'm always moving my head all around the piece while I cut it. I need a new blade already. Ooh, I lost a little bit of detail right here, I think. Uh, maybe not. Nah, that's fine. Really scoring up these chin parts because they love to crack. It's just thin plastic right here that loves to crack. And it's also a, a stress point. It's where the, the plastic is clinging to the mold.
Oh yeah. <laughs> wow. I've really hit a plateau if I've got weird dating profile <laughs> accounts. I must be on some like main YouTube live page. <laughs> See guys, if you're lonely, give Miranda a call. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if you go, if you go look at the other, um, uh, if you look at the other, um, YouTube live streams, like there's live Family Guy and live South Park. It's pretty funny because the comments are so crazy, but, uh, that's the kind of stuff you see is those like porn, you know, like girl in your area accounts. <laughs> I think it's funny. Also, I'm only streaming for a little while longer, so. But this was a very, very fun day of streaming. Very surreal with how many, uh, how many people were tuning in at one point. I had 300 at one point as the peak. Yeah, and my phone is... Flappy Plane Pro. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I've uh, I've noticed how the MCU shell, the newer, in some of the previews, you can really see a lot of like facial structure on the shell. I don't know. I think that's to each his own kind of thing. I make the shells just based on my own choices. And you know, all this structure and stuff you see here, I know it's not like accurate to what a person's face looks like. It's, it was all in getting more of an accurate ASM2 suit. And uh, it, it fits perfectly with the pattern that I made. Um, and so it all comes together. Like, I mean, if I, if I show you the shell on with the, the fabric mask part, you can see that it creates that, that kind of like um, geometrical shape where this pattern piece is flat and then it's flat directly on both sides. Uh, and you know, in the movie, I think that was just because they had thick, thick enough fabric to get that to happen, but I didn't have that. So I had to kind of make do by actually creating the shape on my face shell. Um, so it really is just designed for my pattern and similar patterns. And, uh, but I can see how, you know, it, it it's a little ugly on, other patterns where you can kind of just see the weird shape underneath. Uh, if, and if that happens and you have my shell, you can like sand, I think you could sand the shape down maybe a little bit. Um, but it's, it's not that big of a uh, eye catching detail. Okay. So maybe I'll just start with the pliers to begin with this time rather than kill my fingernails. Okay. So I'm looking for that pop. It's always a little bit of, of a struggle. But it's a pop that allows the air to rush in and get the shell off the mold. Um, I just noticed the comment from uh, Valentin about speaker mesh. Uh, I don't use actual speaker mesh itself. I use something similar. Um, if you can't, uh, I would just paint it with regular spray paint with like really spot, um, light coats, just not to, so you don't fill up the details if you're going with speaker mesh. But uh, I think maybe like perforated vinyl might ultimately be better. Yay, I get to play this game again. It's my favorite. So, things that helped last time. 
Get a little bit of space going here. Well, I think <laughs> the secret the secret message behind this stream is if you get knocked off the horse, just keep getting up on it. That's what this struggle with face shells has kind of been. You know, you, you struggle, you reach reach a point like this where you really have trouble and you can quit. Like I would usually, you know, consider quitting, like especially how that first shell that got ruined, that can just get me so frustrated that it just doesn't make me want to keep working on it when I keep, you know, running into this failure over and over again. But you got to just keep working on it until it gets done. There we go. Okay, so please, please don't crack while I take you off. Okay, there we go, good. All right, another usable shell. Um, no cracks or anything like that. And these are just really, it's so high quality because it's light, you know, it's a really lightweight material, um, but it's strong. It really holds its, its shape, which is important because spandex has a, a tendency to really push and put a lot of pressure on these shells and it's getting more pressure on the sides than it does on the top so if the shell is too thin you can have it push on the sides and then the back pops up and and looks a little awkward um, so you have to use a thick enough plastic that it holds its shape all right cool well that was some fun shell making shell shell making time <laughs> I'm about at the end of my phone's battery here, so it's not going to last too much longer. Um, oh, this is cool. Here's some of this gold material as an ASM2 lens. Um, show you kind of what that looks like. I'm looking forward to doing a, an iron spider project with this. I think that'd look really good for iron spider. Even though, I mean, this, the MCU suit is basically the Iron Spider, because, I mean, it's a suit that was made for Peter by Tony Stark, and that's basically what the Iron Spider costume was. Um, but yeah, I think that'd be fun, fun to pursue anyway. Um, it's a cool, cool gold look. Um, I might make the homecoming uh, homemade suit. I've never really done the homemade style because I like to I like to push myself and learn about like getting these like really you know high quality um, refined looking shapes like the this really hidden seams and the the well done webbing like I like to challenge myself and try to get as close to that kind of stuff as I can. Um, I almost did a bane mask once, flappy plane. I just caught your uh, comment. Um, I had all the components ready and stuff, but I kind of, I like to go in directions where there isn't already a ton of people working on that pro specific project. Like back when Amazing Spider-Man 1 came out, there was like only a couple other people working on that suit design. Um, and so I kind of had the idea to use puff paint again and, you know, it kind of went from there. Um... Yeah, Matthew, I could see how your white your white spray paint could do that. That's that's kind of just the the inevitability of that. I actually cast my mesh like out of solid um, white plastic, so it's not um, painted. This is white vinyl, perforated vinyl, and uh, that's actually a good way to go. This is just stuck on the inside of the plastic lens, but perforated vinyl is really good. Um, has a good look to it, and it won't. Uh, yellow on you. Yeah, so cool. Uh, my phone's about to die, so I'd say rather than just letting it die and not getting to say goodbye, I'll probably just go ahead and call the stream at that. Um, here's the, uh, the head rig I wear, if you're curious. My forehead hurts now. <laughs> So, there you go. Um, yeah, 
did a lot of did a lot of vacuum forming there in that stream. Kind of showed you the ins and outs, do's and don'ts, um, things that can go wrong, like your your um, <laughs> your uh, uh, shell can stick to your buck and stuff like that. But yeah, I think I'm gonna go eat some dinner. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. It was really cool having 300 subscribers at once and. Uh, uh, subscribe. Yeah, I kind of merged my thoughts there. Uh, 300 viewers at once. Uh, subscribe, though, if you enjoyed watching, because I do streams like this about once a week the last few weeks. I might kick it up again, but uh, for now, it's been about once a week. And yeah, it's fun to hang out with you guys. So uh, thanks for tuning in today, and I'll see you guys later.